I'm now going to go ahead and run a model versus schematic simulation to see if the model and the schematic match. I could download all of the generated views, but instead I'm going to use this avdl initiate command. I'm just going to copy this link, then I'm going to go into my Unix shell. I'm going to make a directory for my simulation, and then I'm going to paste that command. If I look inside Cadence, what I'll see is just the schematic. I have the DAC and the schematic view. Now I'm going to publish everything that was generated into Cadence. I'm going to refresh. So now you can see the DAC has the MIM view, which is the model. The spec is also pushed in, and it's got a PDF version of the spec also pushed into the hierarchy. Under the DAC test bench view, we have the test bench itself with the view name of MIM, and then we have two configurations. We have MVI, which is the model versus schematic configuration, and then we have MVM, model versus model. The model versus model configuration view is just used to run the model against itself. It's a good way to check the test bench without needing to run a lengthy schematic simulation. Now I could run the simulation using Cadence, but instead I'm going to run it on the command line using the AV utility that we provide. The first step will be to netlist the Cadence schematic. We netlist by calling the Cadence netlister. Then I'm going to launch the simulation. AV sim MVI for model versus implementation or schematic. Now I've purposely introduced an error in the schematic where I've swapped the least two significant bits. When I run the simulation, we should now see errors. Let's take a look at the results. At a high level, we see that 774 tests were run and there are 256 failures. We were expecting failures because the least two significant bits of LVO in the schematics are flipped. So let's take a look at the simulation from the beginning. You can see at time zero, the simulation was started. When running in model versus schematic mode, we'll skip the assertion tests. But if we run in model versus model mode, we will run the assertion tests. We now go through the first sequence, which is to go through all the LVL combinations. Here, you can see that we begin with minus 128. In the first test, we compare the voltage output of the positive pin between the model and the schematic. What's shown and expected is the model and what's shown in the measured is the schematic, and then we show the difference. Because the difference is less than the two millivolt tolerance we had specified, it's a pass. The same thing is done for the negative terminal of the output and for the supply current. In the case of minus 128, the two least significant bits are the same, as is true for the minus 125. So even though the pins are swapped, it won't show an error. However, for minus 127 and minus 126, they are different, so we can see an error when they're swapped. In this case, the model is showing 753.91 millivolts, and the schematic is showing 757.83 millivolts. And the difference is 3.924 millivolts, which is greater than the 2 millivolt tolerance, and therefore it's an error. The rest of the simulation is similar as we go through all the different codes. So here we get to LVL equals 0, and then we continue going in the positive direction until we get to LVL equals 127. After that, we check the enable pin, where we run the model versus schematic tests with enable equals zero and enable equals one. And given there are errors, in summary, the simulation shows us that problems have been detected. If I didn't know where the error was, I'd want to debug further, and the natural next step is to look at the waveform results. AV results will launch SimVision. I'm now going to go ahead and plot the input to the DAC and the outputs, one for the model and one for the schematic. The LP is the schematic. The LP underscore ref is the model. At this zoom level, it's hard to see what's going on. So I'll zoom in. Now you can see that the model is monotonically increasing 
but in the schematic, because the least two significant bits are flipped, you can see that the output is non-monotonic. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so you can see a little more of what's going on. And we can also plot where the tests were run and where the failures are. Here's where the sampling takes place for all of the tests, and here's where there were failures. At this point, if I didn't know where the bug was, I'd be starting my investigation, looking at the nodes and the schematics and studying the schematics to see where the bug might be. I would also double check the specifications to make sure I'd entered them correctly. In general, the bug could be in the specifications or in the schematics. I've now gone ahead and fixed the schematic. Once fixed, when I run the simulation, this is what I would see if the simulation and the model match. Everything is green and everything's a pass. I can also run the simulation from inside Cadence. So let me show that. I'll open the MVI config view. I'll launch ADEL. I'll set a train time of one second because our test bench will automatically terminate the simulation after all of the sequences have been run. Then I'll go ahead and launch the simulation. And you can see the results here, the same as before, success. Thank you for watching. Please click in the upper left for our next video. Please click in the lower left for the playlist of all of our videos in the series. Please click on the right to subscribe to our channel.